Okay, so today we're going to look at how to fix a, uh, a Kenmore HE squared uh, dryer that's not getting hot. Um, my wife told, told me yesterday that she put a load of laundry in and, well, it didn't dry and it didn't get hot. But it, it worked. So today we're going to figure out what to do and what's, what's wrong with this thing. So looking at some videos, I, I hear that, uh, see that in, in this bottom panel, if we remove it, I can see here there's some screws at the bottom here. See right here, there's one here and one over here okay and we're going to remove those screws and take out the uh, the panel and get access to uh, to the heating element and uh, the high temperature switch see if that's what's causing the problem uh, I suspect that it's the high temperature switch that is faulty or are broken so we're gonna we're gonna figure that out today important safety reminder here uh, what I've done Already before I even opened up the um, uh, before I even open up the, the the dryer there is that I've I've turned off the uh, if you t look here you're gonna look for the dryer okay the circuit breaker uh, is off so there's no power going to the dryer uh, this is a very important uh, thing to remember if you can't pull out your uh, your washer dryer because it's it's too heavy it's a stackable um, make sure that you, you at least turn off your breaker. Uh, you don't want to get hurt. Um, I think it's a 240 volt supply uh, to the to the washer dryer. See, there's there's two two circuit breakers, so it can't kill you. So turn it off. All right, I'm gonna grab the uh, the vacuum now and clean up the dryer. So we're gonna use a quarter inch hex screwdriver uh, to remove the two bolts. Uh, securing the the base of the washer here. Um, we're going to remove those and then remove the front panel. Okay, so I removed the uh, I removed the the front panel here, and you can see there's a whole lot of lint that has been collected here. This this uh, represents a fire hazard. Okay, so. I'm going to get a vacuum and clean this out. Now, to remove this, this front panel, uh, what I had to do, I removed the, the bottom screws, but I pushed up, okay? So I pushed the, I pushed the, the, the plate um, up first, and I pulled from the bottom to pull it out because uh, it's a stackable, stackable uh, washer dryer here. But look at all the lint that's collected. That's, that's crazy. This is about five to six years of, of lint. I, I gotta make a note to uh, to to uh, take this panel out every every year or two and make sure it's uh, it's cleaned up because that, that's a fire hazard. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get the vacuum and and uh, clean that up a bit. Okay, so so I've removed by hand uh, some of the lint here at the front. It, it's a little bit too thick to use the vacuum. I don't want to clog my vacuum, but I'm noticing that there's a whole whole lot of lint in the back there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to remove this, uh, this screw here and remove this, this fastener. Uh, what this is, this is, uh, back here is where the heating element is. If you look in the back, uh, inside here, you're going to have your heating element, uh, and your high temperature sensor. So we, we want to remove this panel probably, uh, to check the, the, um, conductivity, uh, of the, the heating, uh, element and the, um, the high temperature sensor. So let's uh, let's remove this panel, uh, and then I'm going to get back in there and try to remove uh, more of the lint, and then I'll use the vacuum to just uh, further clean it up. Uh, there is a whole lot of stuff in there. I might uh, actually take a picture with um, with the camera here with the light on uh, to show you exactly how much lint is back there. Okay, so to remove that uh, little screw here at the base, at the base here, I had to use a a, uh, a screwdriver uh, that can uh, angle. You can also use a, a monkey wrench or an adjustable wrench uh, to remove the screw, but I uh, highly recommend one of these. 
Okay, so to remove that bracket, what we're going to do, uh, first we're going to put on some gloves, okay, and then uh, we're going to remove this bracket. Now I'm going to have to turn off the, the camera here while I put on my gloves, uh, but uh, you'll see in the next in the next section here I'm going to I'm going to remove that bracket. Okay, so I just noticed as, as I was trying to pull off the bracket here is that there's another screw here that needs to be removed uh, before this, this bracket can be pulled off. So um, it doesn't look like my angle, my uh, probably a wrench is going to work, a uh, monkey wrench or an adjustable uh, to remove this, this screw. Um, so uh, I'm going to go downstairs and grab, grab something to pull that off. All right, be right back. Okay, so now with uh, with this with this screw removed, I just used a, a a ratchet to remove that screw here. Uh, we can we can just sort of pull off uh, this heat shield. Um, wow, there is a lot of dust, a lot of lint uh, built up, and that can catch fire. What a very dangerous, very dangerous, uh, right in the heating element. Look at that. Look at that. This was a, a fire waiting to happen. It's a good thing that we, we caught this when we did. Okay, so uh, we're going we're gonna to clean all this lint up. And uh, then we're going to remove this, the, the heating element, the whole panel, this whole panel here. We're going to pull it right off. Uh, but first we're going to remove these. I'm going to remove the lint first and then we're going to figure out which, uh, take, take some pictures and, and uh, make sure that we have the wires uh, properly uh, labeled so that when we put everything back together, we don't have to research and find out what the problem, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, if we've made any mistakes with the wiring when we put everything back together. Okay, so I'm gonna clean all this up first, and then uh, we'll we'll come back. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and remove these uh, these, these clips here, um, these wires. So if you look, uh, the wire with the white stripe is the one that's on top. Okay, I'm gonna take a capture some images here. Okay, so it's the wire with the white stripe that needs to go back on top. So we're going to remove these two. These are the power this these are the power um, connectors to connect to the uh, the heating element. The heating element is the spring here that you see. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to remove these first. And then I believe I believe the ones behind it are the um, the high temperature switch. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and remove these first two clips and then I'll get back to you. Okay, and we're gonna remove this. We're gonna we're gonna squeeze. I gotta I gotta use both hands to pry these clips off. Okay, so one and two. We're gonna pry them off, uh, and then we're gonna move on to the high temperature sensor. Okay, so I'm moving on to the uh, just moved on to the the high temperature sensor, and the top um, the top clip. Okay, is this white the one with the white? It's the other okay, half. So of this this white clip connects to the top of both the heating element up here so this part goes to this clip and the other one goes to the one side of the um, high temperature sensor in my in my unit it's the the top um, we'll, we'll pull it out and we'll take a look uh, shortly okay Okay, so this whole bracket, just you can just move it. It just pops out uh, from the back here. It's connected by an angle bracket. Um, what we need to do is just get in there and just remove the last two uh, clips here. Now, you see this? You see here, I want to show you. The, the, the way the clips are connected, uh, let's see here. We've got this, this black clip that was connected to uh, to this part here, 
Okay, this this part of the temperature sensor. Okay, the black clip is just one. This wire is just one wire, and it connects to here. I'm not sure what this does, uh, but uh, when I find out, I will I'll let you guys know. So the way it's connected here is, you see this black, this part right here, uh, this black wire. Okay, like this. I'm gonna just put it in just to remember. I took a picture of that. So the black wire connects to the black wire on on this bottom here. Uh, okay, so I removed the element, the whole the whole heating element and the whole the whole assembly there, and look what I found. Uh, <laughs> Looks like there's a whole bunch of lint buildup here. Now, if I, look, I just wanted to take a, some quick shots here of <laughs> just how bad the situation is. This looks like burned lint. Uh, serious fire hazard. I, I think there might be a design flaw in these machines. Uh, not sure what, what to make of this, but uh, it's pretty bad uh, when you have burned, burned lint. Uh, this is a, a serious uh, potential fire hazard. Okay, we'll uh, we'll get back. Okay, so now that we've got the unit out uh, and cleaned up a bit, uh, we're going to test a couple things. We're going to use our our multimeter. I got a digital multimeter. I'm going to pull out here, and what we're going to do is we're going to test the conductivity. I'm going to start with uh, probably the most likely candidate here, the high temperature sensor. Now the high temperature sensor we have here uh, is is this part here. Let me see if I can get a good image. Okay, so we got out our uh, our digital multimeter here, and we've got our our uh, high temperature switch. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to test to make sure our digital multimeter uh, is working properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to take take our one lead. And we're going to touch it directly to the other lead. And we're going to see that the, the resistance should go down to pretty much zero. Okay, so we're just calibrating our our uh, our resistance this is about less than an ohm. Anyway, that's because of the way I'm. I have to hold the phone while I'm doing this. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to touch one lead on the switch and we're going to touch the other lead here we go let me see I'm going to try to do this with okay so I've got the um, digital multimeter here connected uh, just touching both leads on the high temperature switch and it does seem that uh, there is conductivity now what we're going to do is we're going to test uh, as we control the temperature on the switch to make sure that it's not faulty uh, we're going to put it on an electric um, electric uh, surface, a griddler, a hot surface where we control the temperature and see at what point that switch uh, switches to off. Um, and we'll we'll come back with with more. Okay, so uh, we're testing the 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 uh, temperature at which the thermostat switches. Uh, I just set it to about three hundred and twenty five on the griddle, and I think I just heard the uh, thermostat switch off. Uh, so I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and test it uh, with my uh, digital multimeter uh, to see if there's now no conductivity um, uh, between the two leads. If there is no conductivity now, then the thermostat is uh, actually okay. This is high temperature switch. Okay, so I'm going to go do that because I need two hands uh, to do that. Okay, so in my case, I found that there was no conductivity when the switch uh, reached the temperature. And uh, what I also found is that um, it's uh, when it gets hot, it, it switches anyway. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to let it cool and I'm going to test if, uh, if now there is conductivity between the leads as it's cool. So we're going to do that. And if it is, then we can rule out, uh, at least in this case, in my case here, the, um, the the high temperature switch. Turns out that we do have continuity uh, between the two leads, 
of the uh, high temperature switch thermostat. So this part is still good. Uh, I'm going to test for continuity here uh, between these two leads. I'm hoping I can do this with one hand so I can show you. Um, and, oops, I'm not touching the, there you go. Uh, it looks like we do have continuity on on this uh, fuse here. So uh, that part is okay. So now the last part that something could be wrong with is the element, the uh, heating element itself. Okay, so let's test for, to test for continuity, basically what we do is we put one lead, let's see if I can stick it in here, so I don't have to hold it. One lead here, bring the multimeter a little bit closer so you can see, and one lead here, and I'll put some pressure to make sure, make absolutely sure, and there's no change. So we have no continuity for the heating element. In the heating element, so I think that might be our issue. Uh, so to remove the heating element, what we need to do is remove this screw and pull it out. So I, I pulled out the uh, the heating element from the, uh, the the shield. I guess this is the the heat shield, and uh, it was a little bit difficult. I had to really pull from this end and use a use a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, to to kind of push. Wearing gloves, of course, to, to pull it all out because you can get cut on, on this metal. Um, so, so I've done so that. I found it. It's a mechanical break in the coil. So this coil is definitely burned out, and that is definitely right, the problem. I went to the store to buy a new one. Okay, so I just got back from, from the store, and I picked up a new, a new heating element. Uh, for the Kenmore HE squared, it's, the, uh, it's a Whirlpool... One, the the um, product number, in case you're wondering, is uh, it's 338. Right, here we go. Let's see if I can get a good shot of it here. Product number is 3387747. Okay, and that's the part number, the Whirlpool part number, 3387747. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to take this upstairs and we're going to install it in the machine. Uh, before I install it, I'm going to do the conductivity test just to make sure that the part is good. Okay, actually you should probably do this at the store. Uh, I just forgot to bring my um, my uh, multimeter with me. But uh, we're just going to do the conductivity test at these leads to make sure that uh, that everything is working in, in working order. Okay. Okay, so I'm, I'm back upstairs and I'm going to install the, the heating element back into the, uh, uh, the heat shield uh, con container here. And um, anyway, everything, as you can see, I've installed, reinstalled the, um, uh, the thermostat um, or the uh, high temperature switch. Uh, the fuse was fine, so I'm going to leave that. And uh, I'm going to put my gloves on and I'm going to push, push this in. Uh, I'm going to need both hands, so um, I'm going to stop the recording now. Okay, so everything is is installed uh, back back, and now we're going to put it. We're going to put the whole unit. We're going to reinstall it uh, back in the machine the way we took it out. So step one is to uh, reorient it properly. Now you can see this clip. This 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 is the top part. This is up. So what we do, we kind of you kind of insert it in and then uh, push it down. So that's how it just kind of hangs. I think that's probably why some of the lint was getting uh, was was getting caught inside. Um, not sure if that's a design issue um, or if it's has something to do with the way we're using the machine. But uh, I think it's more likely the the former. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna need both hands to to reinstall this, but uh, maybe I'll show you a little bit how to how I'm doing this. So I'm gonna reinstall it like this inside. Uh, it's got to kind of hook in. Not sure if you can see that. It's got to kind of hook in and then down. So we got to get this little hook inside and in, but I'm going to need both hands to kind of do this properly. So um, you'll kind of feel it when you do it, that it, it's hooked in properly. Okay, so I'm going to put this down and I'm going to just reinstall it. Okay, so just want to make one point clear that um, this this piece fits inside. So there's like a, a round 
sort of like a round re a receptacle. So this piece goes inside the receptacle, um, a little bit on an angle, uh, a, a downward angle, and then once it's it's pushed, uh, you kind of push it in, and then you bring this piece down. Okay, so reverse of the way we when you take it out, you push. Sorry, you push up on this to to, to and then you pull out. Okay, so that's just that's how that's done. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna reinstall the um, the wires uh, in the reverse order uh, that we did them before that we took them out. Okay, so I just noticed that on one side of this, see this uh, the red wire with the white the white strip. Now that's got to go at the top. Uh, you see the red one I just installed. The red wire. This is the power coming in uh, from the from the I guess it's from the from the unit here, but uh, uh, the red wire, this red wire has one side with a with a, a wide, uh, a wide clip I guess. The other side, the other side is for connecting to the, the high temperature uh, switch, the thermostat, high temperature thermostat. So anyway, we're um, I have to install it from the wide side here. Okay, so we're going to install that, uh, and then we're going to install the other end to the high temperature switch. Uh, okay, so now I've I've installed everything back uh, the way it was. Uh, I'm not sure how well you can see back there, but uh, there's there's an image that I'll I'll put on the on the site or on the uh, in the description. Um, and we'll 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 see exactly where everything goes. We've got the, the red wire at the top. Not sure if you can see it from here, but anyway, uh, everything is back in the same uh, way that we we originally installed. Okay, so here we're gonna install the the shield again. You see, there's a little um, little notch of metal, a little. Um, and then, so that fits inside, there's a hole at the bottom here. And then we're going to just push it in. Okay, it shows the correct positioning. Um, and then we're going to screw the shield. There's a little little screw down here. We're going to put that in. And then we're going to screw the other end. We're going to screw back uh, into, into here. Okay, so we're going to put a, a little screw back here, a little screw here. And we're gonna put everything back together. So what I found was that if you put this screw in first before you even, uh, you know, install the whole piece in, what I did was just in, screw this all the way in, and then slide the whole piece in, and then screw this 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 nut in. It's not really holding anything. It's just there's a hole through there that's about the same height, and you gotta push push down on the uh, push down on it so that the bolt goes through that hole holds it in place, and then this just screws in like that. Okay, I'm going to just put the cover back on, and we should be done.